and Will and I were meant to be getting married this Saturday. And I didn't think I minded that much, but I do. Morning everyone, it's a Tuesday and I've got a really exciting day ahead because I'm filming a collaboration. I haven't filmed a collaboration in person in a very long time, but I've got Anbu and his YouTube channel is Anbu. I've linked it down below. He speaks Tamil, but also English as well. And I saw him make a really good video on the Indian accent. And I thought it would be really cool to get together and take a look at some of the differences between British English, when I say British English, I mean modern RP, the accent I speak with, and Indian English, because Indian English is a native language. So we're going to do that. But I'm, I'm a bit nervous. I don't know why. <laughs> I um, I've never really had I've never had another YouTuber come to this house before, so I just feel weirdly nervous, but I'm really excited to meet him, and we've been talking loads um, over WhatsApp. Alfonso is excited. I've got him this new bed. You look so smart in it. I have a feeling you might outgrow this bed. No. Naughty. Hello everyone, this is Anbu here. Hello. I'll put his channel on screen. We have just finished filming. I think it went well. I think it went really well. Yes. So excited. We spoke about the differences between British English and Indian English, which is a video I haven't seen much of that Hello. before, Hello. but um, we felt quite inspired to do it after I did a video on Australian versus British versus American English. Mm -hmm. And I just thought it'd be really cool to yeah. kind of inc include yeah. some other varieties yeah. of English. Because how, how, we, how we thought of it was that there's over one billion people in India and there are some differences which we've never heard of before and there mm -hmm. are some words that is used in Eng Indian English that it just doesn't exist in British English. That's really yes. exciting. Yeah, some of those are so cool. We also spoke a lot about some words that the British borrow from mm. India as well. You can find those on, on Andrew's channel, actually. And yes, and we now have to hurry and get you back because yes. you've got some teaching to do. <laughs> yep, got to hop on a train to London now, but it's been so fun. Yes. Film with you today. Thank you so much. And he bought me some beautiful flowers oh. as well. It was so nice. <laughs> and one last thing, because Ambu is six foot. I had to wear these stupid high heels with tights on <laughs> to make myself the same height because there was a ridiculous difference. I never even thought I was that short, but I just have a lot of tall men in my life. Okay, I've just driven Anbu to the station and now I have to hop in the car again because I'm going to go and give blood. Um, this is something I do around every four months. Um, I think men can do it every three months, but women can only do it every four months. And I think it's going to be my seventh time, my seventh donation. And so each time you give blood, you give one pint and um, it really doesn't hurt that much. It's uncomfortable when the needle goes in, but it's such an important thing to do. Stocks are really low. They're especially low now that we're in a pandemic because people aren't going out as much to donate. So the NHS is begging for donations. So if you haven't done it before, I really recommend you give it a try, unless you're deathly scared of needles, in which case it's totally understandable that you wouldn't want to give blood. I only have to give up maybe two hours maximum of my time, and you get a free biscuit at the end, which makes it so worthwhile. So I'm not sure how well you can see me because it's suddenly got really dark. It's 20 past seven, so it took an hour and 20 minutes. It doesn't normally take that long, but they're running a really reduced service and I did it. It wasn't painful at all. I'll um, put some footage here of, of me doing it. They make you recline, they find a vein and then they just slip it in. It, it doesn't hurt that much at all. It's very much mind over matter. And then you stay there pumping your 
fist and you have to um, clench your bum and your thighs as well in the chair and it, it takes about five minutes normally for me and then you have something to eat and a drink afterwards and then you're good to go and it's really really lovely there are people from all walks of life there um, but everyone's kind of getting together to do that same thing to try and give a little bit of themselves to help other people I guess I mean I am giving a part of myself um, so I think it's a really nice thing to do and I'm an O plus blood type um, and I know the stocks are low and definitely some of the rarer blood types are really really low if you haven't tried it before and you'd like to give it a go you can download the app it's called NHS give blood and you can book yourself in at a local place and then you must let me know how it goes as well if I've persuaded you to do it <sighs> I've just had to pull over <laughs> and I feel so stupid but I was listening to the country music station and this stupid song came on called Speechless by Dan and Shay and it's about weddings and 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 Will and I were meant to be getting married this Saturday and I didn't think I minded that much but I do we've put so much time and we've been so excited about it and we put we've put so much money into it as well and so we've postponed it for next year but the government came out today saying that They've limited weddings to 15 people again. And more than anything, I just feel a bit stupid for planning such a, an extravagant wedding and inviting so many people and, you know, spending so much money on it. I feel stupid for being tearful about it as well. But I think it just hit me when that stupid song came on. Ugh. I don't even know if I'm gonna put this in the video because I feel really pathetic. But but it has it has made me sad today. I think this is the first time I've cried about the wedding. Hopefully the last. What a stupid, stupid song. I can't believe I'm blaming the song. <laughs> In the latest news of exciting things outside of my dirty kitchen window, I've never shown you this guy before, but um, actually she's a girl. Um, she is a stray or feral cat. Um, that we've never been able to catch because obviously we would want her to be neutered because she had kittens before The people who lived in this house before told me that they had been feeding her So I've carried it on but she's so funny. She just stares. I'm gonna give her some food in a minute Look at her. Isn't she hilarious? She runs away when I put the food out and then she eats it really really enthusiastically So I think she's very very cute. She's just completely feral. She's a wild cat. I've just fed her. She is a scaredy cat she might run away if I come over. Go on, go back. Go on, take it, I'm absolutely fine. We're not really sure what to do with her. I might call Cats Protection, but I'm always really worried about these places because they, some of them seem to put them down and she's happy here. She only comes every now and again. She maybe comes once a week or so when she needs some food um, and she just sits there and waits until I notice her. Um, she doesn't cause any problems, it's only when she she had a litter before of kittens. Okay, so this might look a bit makeshift, but I don't have any nice packaging stuff, so I've used newspaper. Um, but I've got a friend that's having a bit of a rubbish time at the moment, so I thought I would make her a box of happy things. Um, so I'm using the Fairfax and Favour box that I got the other day. And I have got her some happy tea bags. I don't expect this to cure cure everything, by the way. It's just a gesture. She's got a dog. So this is a, <laughs> a toy <laughs> that the dog can hold because you put treats in there and it makes them look like they're smiling. I mean, how could you not laugh at that? <laughs> some bacon flavored dog bubbles. I've tried these with Diego. He absolutely loved them. Um, my favourite logic puzzle book. I've got this and I absolutely loved it. Just a bit of distraction. My favourite candle. This is my favourite smell ever. I've got the reed diffusers all around my house. I've got the room spray. My mum bought me this candle when I was feeling sad, so I'm passing it on. Um, I've got these face masks as well, which I bought. There was like a little add-on option um, when I was buying some. Hello. You're right. Oh, big yawn. I was buying some makeup and I added them on. 
They're just little face masks. There's a rose stem cell, Irish more mud. That's a cucumber one and that's a pumpkin enzyme one. So I'll put those in there by Thomas Peter Roth. And, oh, these are the best dog chews ever. If you've got a dog and they are, or a puppy, and they're starting to chew everything, try these. It's Himalayan yak cheese. So it's basically like a really hard cheese and they can just gnaw away at it. They are quite expensive. I normally buy them in bulk, but I've just got two there for her dog. And yeah, I think that's it. I'll just put the card in and I'll take that to the post office. But I, I just feel really sad in, in kind of lockdown when you're far away from people and you know they're having a hard time. You can't really just go and hug them. Um, so hopefully this is a, a hug equivalent. There we are. Also, look at my porridge this morning. I ran out of oats, so I used oatmeal. Yuck, I cooked it way too much, but I'm going to the gym, so I need something in me, so I'm just gonna eat it. I considered wrapping this in cling film, um, but then I found brown paper. I've got to show you our new catcus. <laughs> Get it? Um, our cat scratching post. I got it from Yes, good boy, that's exactly what you're meant to do. Um, from Not In The Dog House. It's a really nice, no, those are my fingers. It's a really nice shop with so many cool cat and dog things there. Really nice, and he absolutely loves it. So cool, I will link, I will link it down below because I've never seen one like this before. Oh, whoops, I paid too much attention to the cat and Diego came over. Like, excuse me, I'm still number one. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> okay, we are back to slow gin making. I'm gonna walk you through the process of making it because my gin has arrived. Right, I'm just giving all of the berries a wash, um, the slow berries, there are loads, so I'm gonna have to do it in, in sections, putting it into a jug afterwards, and then pouring it into a freezer bag like that each one of these is about two kilos so you can imagine i have got quite a few um but basically some people say that you should only pick the slows after the first frost and this is because the berry expands and then it kind of releases more of its juices but it's absolutely fine to pick before the first frost or just to pick anyway freeze them overnight and then leave them to thaw out and then use them the next day that's what i do it makes the skin split it just makes it kind of fuse with the gin so much better i always get a really good result by freezing them in bags and then defrosting them the next day there we are five bags and I've just weighed them all and there's a total of just over seven kilos. So I'm really happy. I do think I'll have to pick a couple more though. What are you doing? What are you doing? Mm, I agree. Okay, it's the next day. Oh, cold. <laughs> and Will has just taken these out of the freezer for me. Um, so I'm going to let them defrost and then I'll show you the next step because look what's arrived this what are you doing <laughs> yeah 10 liters of gin um i've just bought the cheapest gin at aldi i really don't recommend that you spend a lot on a premium gin this gin's fine probably wouldn't drink it on its own um but it, it forms part of the liqueur <laughs> hello <laughs> you silly silly thing hello but don't worry i'm not planning to drink um all of the slow gin myself i don't think i told you last time but um i make all this for christmas presents for friends and family so once this is made whenever i see someone i always give them a little bottle of this on christmas day it marks out everyone's place on the tables um, yeah, it's just a fantastic gift to have because the bought stuff is not the same, is it? <laughs> is it? Oh, hello, are you excited? We're just gonna make a bit more cider. We're just making another batch. We've got our apples. You ready? You don't want that one. Ooh, no. No, some of them have gone, but we'll pick those out. We'll all be good. I, you can't, no. <laughs> so we're doing it in batches. 
we've not got anything big enough to put all the chopped apples in so we're gonna have to buy some buckets but I'm excited to do the process again and to make some cider this time okay we've filled it up that was two two loads of that fill up one of those look how much we've got left in the barrel I know I think we're gonna make quite a lot today let's yeah. go for it <laughs> we've got enough time it's so satisfying when it starts to come out oh, oh the color's beautiful there you go. oh look at that liquid gold i could watch that all day so we were making good progress i was doing the chopping and will was doing the juicing until i got a blister on my hand just from chopping apples <laughs> You can tell I'm a YouTuber, no manual labour in me. <laughs> How are you doing, Diggy boy? You're a good boy, aren't you? We've brushed your teeth today. Come on, let's see them. Oh, they're so pretty. And we've got, he's guarding the pulp. We're going to give this to some birds. So they'll enjoy that. Um, excuse me. No. Dead. Slowest dead ever. <laughs> Good boy. You don't eat the rotten apples. That's disgusting. Let the birds have those. Time for a little update. We've been doing really well. We actually think we've got too many apples because we've only got one 25 litre bucket and we're already on 15. So we've got 10 litres left. Well, Will, can't we, can't we do it till 30? We need to leave a little bit of room up at the top. Oh, okay. What's, what for? fermentation right yeah so 10 liters left what's that between your paws naughty he's so sorry look at him you shouldn't do that <laughs> he's so remorseful <laughs> look we'll throw this away come for a cuddle okay we love you silly boy we are on our last load and we've got loads of apples left. So we need to buy another bucket, don't we? I'm a bit of a chaotic mess at the minute now. Yeah, it's not looking so organized, but this is just for personal use, isn't it? So doesn't quite matter. Last load. Hopefully. It's a lot harder than it looks. I just tried it and it is so hard. Last load, will it bring us to 25 liters? I hope so. <laughs> it's taken ages. <laughs> no! <laughs> 24. What are we going to do? We run out of apples. Yeah, that's true. Should we do one more litre? Diego, what have you got? That looks exciting. Is it a root? <gasps> You're so proud of yourself. You can have that. Good boy. Okay. Okay then is like, go and play in dog language. He's so pleased. Okay, we've just been through the motions again. Will it be a litre? Go on, please. Oh, no! <laughs> we might as well call that 25 litres. Crush on my hands now. <laughs> What do you think, Diego? What do you think? Try and squeeze the last morsels out. Oh, that might... Do you think? I don't think so. <laughs> Go on then, the last bit. I mean, we're so close. Yeah, that's 25 litres. Yeah. Yeah, we'll call it a day. Yeah. Apple juice expands. Oh my word, that was a lot of work. I'm very excited to ferment it now. I just hope we don't mess it up. Okay, so I'm using these Kilner jars to actually make the slow gin. And I used these last year. I have actually bought two more that I'll bring out um, because obviously I'm making a lot more. But they're dusty and dirty because they've been hanging around since last year. So I'm going to put them in the dishwasher for a cycle. And so important, I'm going to sterilize them. Now, because these are really big, I'm doing it with a chemical. Um, but last year I boiled them all. 
And if you're using smaller containers to make your slow gin, it's quite easy just to get a big pan, bring it up to boiling with these in it, um, and then boil it for like 10 minutes and then they're sterilized. But you absolutely must sterilize your containers. You must also sterilize the bottles that you're going to put the gin in as well. What are you doing? Hmm. Okay, so they've been washed and I've just filled them with warm water and the chemical and I'm leaving that for 10 minutes. And it's strong because I got a little bit on my finger and I have a little paper cut and it's really stinging. So I'm doing one litre of gin, 750 grams of slows, and 375 grams of sugar. So the rest will be a little shorter. Right, so I've realised that I don't have enough sugar. So I'm going to get sugar today and put in the sugar tomorrow, but these will go off, these berries will go off if I leave them any longer. So I'm going to preserve them in the gin now and then add the sugar and my secret ingredient tomorrow. Should be absolutely fine. I don't think there'll be a single difference. And there we have it, what a mess. The, um, the kitchen smells like a brewery at the moment, a distillery, sorry. Um, but yeah, we've got all of this space to fill up with sugar. Tomorrow, I'll keep you updated, but these are just gonna sit in the dark for now. Sealed, of course. Someone has just woken up from their nap and is very sleepy. Oh, big yawn, big yawn. Okay, so I've just got these out of the cupboard. Diego helped, thank you very much. You helped by getting in my way as I was carrying heavy objects. <laughs> and I'm just gonna put in the sugar. I've, I use golden caster sugar. Normal caster sugar is, is fine. I just always prefer golden. And I'm gonna put 350 grams in the two litre ones and 500 grams if I can fit it in the three litre ones. So it ends up being quite syrupy. Some people don't like it so sweet, I think because you only have a little shot of it. It's so warming um, that it's fine to have, you know, a couple of teaspoons of sugar. <laughs> and then I'm going to add my secret ingredient, which is some ethically sourced vanilla. And I'm going to put in one pod per jar and that is extravagant because this is expensive i think this cost me 20 pounds on amazon um but this is these are gifts i want them to be as nice as possible and i did this last year and i got some amazing feedback but i'm sure you could maybe put just like a piece of a pod in each one or maybe half a pod or something um you know don't go don't be as extravagant as i am I get very excited about these things and when it comes to gifts, I just go all out and um, I maybe need to rein it in. I do a week, I do a monthly spending analysis and I put everything that I've spent into different categories. Gifts, gifts is always way more than I expect it to be, but I can't resist, I cannot resist. So let's get started. Oh my God, there is nothing like the smell of fresh vanilla. Oh, it's amazing. It's so different to synthetic vanilla. So we'll pop one of those in there. The reason I use golden caster is it's a much richer flavor. You can't normally smell sugar, but you can smell golden caster sugar. It smells sweet. <laughs> sweet and syrupy, almost like golden syrup, if you've ever smelt that. So we're just going to put in, I'm pouring this with my wrong hand because I'm filming. This is not a good idea. Give me a second. Okay. That's done, 350 grams exactly. And then I'm going to seal them and give them a really good shake. And then you put them back in the dark and then every day, ideally, you want to take them out of the cupboard and give them, just turn them on their head a little bit, hold on tight, um, until the sugar dissolves over time and it becomes a beautiful liqueur. And there we have it, nine liters. Well, it will possibly make more. Um, because obviously the sugar is added to it. Although does that dissolve? I've forgotten all my, all my science lessons. <laughs> um, but yeah, around nine liters. I've put in nine liters of gin, and then I'm going to leave that for two months. Some people say three. I'm doing two. Oh, Will's back. Will, I've finished the slow gin. Well, I haven't finished doing, drinking it. I've finished making it. Oh, wonderful. Look how much. Cool. <laughs> But yes, we'll, 
in about two months time, around Christmas time. Oh, he's happy, his dad's home. Yeah, we'll put them into little bottles. Um, and I'll show you how I do the straining process and everything, but you're just gonna have to wait. Hello everyone, it's Saturday night and we're going out again. <gasps> I'm so excited. Uh, yes, we're going to meet some friends for a meal in Cambridge. I haven't been out in ages and I get to wear a new dress for the first time. No! The cat just grabbed the little strap from my camera and dragged it down. Not good, Alfonso. This is my dress. Not sure if you can see it well. I had seen an online friend buying some really nice dresses from there. So we went to the town where it's based, but you can buy online. And it's in this amazing town called Marlow in Buckinghamshire. My mum and I went for the day, we had a lovely lunch, we did lots of shopping, and I bought two dresses from this shop. Oh, do you like it? Do you like it? Good boy. Aren't these beautiful? My parents have loaned these to me because they don't have anywhere for them in their house, but they are vintage suitcases. One second. Let me show you because the coolest thing is that they have the old stickers on them. So that one says luggage or baggage. I just think it's a little piece of history. Absolutely gorgeous. Oh no, left my wellies outside overnight. Also, I couldn't find matching socks. Today is not going well. Um, we're just going to take Diego on a little walk because he's been very good and he deserves a, a lovely extra walk. Some time away from that damn cat. We're gonna go on a walk. Yes. Diego, you happy? <laughs> Family walk. Go on then. Come on. Yes. Whoa. There you go. Was that lovely? Did you love that? We loved it for you. We love doing it for you. 